High demand, natural disasters, and a low supply of coal, all are factors that led to power outages in parts of the country recently. The blackouts forced some factories to temporarily shut down, including ones that supply big-name companies like Apple and Tesla. Authorities are urging utilities to boost distribution and reduce power cuts. China's largest state-owned power company says it will make sure its customers have power for the coming winter. Joining me for more on China's power generation challenge is Chenghua Wu. She is the CEO of the Beijing Future Innovation Center and executive director of the Professional Association for China's Environment. Um, this is something we started reporting on last week. What's the fallout from these power cuts? I think it's a supply crisis uh, of fossil fuels in particular at this moment because China's energy sector still relies heavily on fossil fuels there. And uh, the fallout basically impacts almost everyone, everything, every sector, uh, from industrial to commercial to residential. Uh, literally, you know, the country just cannot, you know, the power sector cannot provide adequate supply of electricity. And in order to respond to this particular situation, of course, on one side, we have to adopt something called planned or rationing. Uh, you know, uh, blackout or outage at this moment. In the meantime, the government also started to step up efforts in terms of emergency response uh, to dramatically increase the coal production and uh, coal in importing uh, coal, uh, as well as natural gas, among others. Uh, of course, uh, you know, particularly for the northern part, northeastern part of China, the winter is coming, the temperature dropping, so heating becomes a priority. This is a part of, you know, critical for people's livelihood and the well-being. Uh, so you started to see suddenly this is sort of chaotic situation in, in the country, throughout the country, covering more than 20 provinces at this moment, uh, in order to figure out uh, where the fallouts are. And uh, of course, from supply side, in the meantime, actually trying to figure out how to respond to the emergency so that we'll be able to uh, at least, pa you know, passing through the winter uh, in a sort of a little bit more comfortable way. But one thing we know for sure, the price of energy, the cost of energy will remain high. And that's one of the big, big issues actually on the table that that's going to require the government, business and the society together to figure out how to address that. Uh, you know, we heard the explanation, high demand, natural disasters, and a low supply of coal fueling this problem. Unpack some of this for us, because we've talked about climate change on this broadcast with you in the past, and I know that you said that the natural disasters we're seeing are becoming more severe, and that can be traced to climate change. Is this a cautionary tale, not just for China, but for all of us? Absolutely. I think it's already a reality. Uh, if you look at it this summer, I think a part of the uh, sort of supply crisis in China uh, it was because actually back in the summer, you know, sustained uh, extreme heat, uh, uh, extreme weather events, uh, that definitely has increased dramatically actually the demand for cooling, uh, air conditioning. And uh, so that, of course, increased the demand for electricity. And uh, we've seen that in China, in US, in Europe, almost everywhere. And that's definitely, I think it's, it's a proven case already. That's uh, unfortunately part of the harsh reality we have to deal with. And more and more so that has to be integrated into the consideration of national energy plan. And uh, we need to take into consideration of this sort of sudden surge of supplies on this basically in many cases. And I think the reality shows most of the countries actually developed or developing are not prepared actually for this sort of, uh, you know, uh, disruption. And that's why we end up in the crisis. And now I think moving forward, now we are aware of this. And uh, so that we'll be able to, you know, uh, take that into consideration when we plan our energy, national energy strategy, particularly in the context of clean energy, you know, revolution or transition in order to meet or tackle climate change there. Uh, again, this is another big, big issue on the table. I think the global community needs to figure out uh, how to address that together with less than one month leading up to COP26 at Glasgow, and hopefully that's going to be brought up as a major topic for global discussion. You were talking about harsh realities. Uh, one of the harsh realities, China's coal market obviously impacted. You're saying they got to get more coal, but as you know, a lot of people, when you go to China, they complain about the pollution that comes from coal. Are you going to see more of a transition in China to, to greener forms of energy? We know that's happening, but is it going to accelerate as a result, do you think? Uh, theoretically, yes. Midterm, longer term, that's absolutely the trend. 
But I think today we are sort of stuck in a situation short term, sort of emergency response mindset. Uh, that's why you started to see the national government is quickly rolling out, actually increasing uh, coal production, uh, which the country literally has been sort of reversing that, actually, reducing coal production, reliance on coal in the last decade in particular. But now in order to respond to, to this particular situation, coal production is definitely rising. I think I've seen some forecasts that by the end of this year, probably coal production consumption will be rising at least by 20 percent compared to previous year. That's going to be really unfortunate because that's going to generate a major sort of increase of emissions of carbon emissions and definitely impacting global change or global, you know, a, a global you know, effort in terms of decarbonizing actually our energy, our economy and infrastructure. And uh, so that's a short term. Uh, as I said, I think midterm, longer term, the trend is set already. Uh, I think there are lots of deeper discussions very recently, uh, at least within my policy advisory community uh, that I've been part of, uh, trying to figure out actually where the fallouts are, in particular in the policy designing process. How do we make sure we really look at the issue from supply chain issue perspective, from value chain perspective, as well as from geopolitical perspective? So, and of course, as well as the extreme weather events there as well. So with all those factors, thoughts connected, then we'll be able probably to come back to come back, come out with a better policy design in order to make sure all the system works and all the efforts aligned actually, not only secure the energy supply, but more and more importantly actually to make sure we continue to drive forward the decarbonizing, decarbonizing process in order to address global climate change challenge. A lot of factors at play here. Uh, Chung Wu, always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much.